In this video on Programming Next Steps, we look at the use of stack frames with subroutines. For this topic, we're going to use an example program to discuss how a stack frame is used when working with subroutines. This simple program, Roll a Dice, performs as follows. It rolls two six-sided dice until the numbers on each dice are different. It prints out a score based on the value of the dice with the largest first. For example, if dice 1 was 5 and dice 2 was 2, the score would be 5-2. If dice 1 was 1 and dice 2 was 6, the score would be 6-1. There are multiple points in this program where user-defined subroutines are called. Line 15 and 16 call the user-defined subroutine roller dice. Line 19 calls the user-defined subroutine order dice. And line 24 calls output throw. Each time a subroutine is called, the program jumps to a different part. Once the subroutine is completed, the program needs to return where it left off. Before the program jumps off to the subroutine, it needs to know where to return to and be able to restore the values of any local variables and parameters when it returns. And this is achieved using what is known as a stack frame. Every time a subroutine is called, a frame containing all the required information is constructed and added to the stack. Let's take a look at this in action. So in this program, the code starts at the bottom of the code listing. In this case, it's line 23, where we import the Python random library. It then calls the subroutine output throw. So the program jumps and executes the code from here. But before calling the subroutine, the system needs to construct a stack frame, add a return address to the stack frame, add any local variables to the stack frame, and then push the completed stack frame onto the stack. How this happens behind the scenes is completely abstracted from you. The operating system takes care of it. Now at line 11, the program continues to execute in sequence until it reaches line 15. It then calls the subroutine roll a dice. So the program jumps and executes the code from here. But again, before calling the subroutine, the system needs to construct a stack frame, add the return address to it, add any local variables to it, and push the completed stack frame onto the stack. Now at line one, the program continues to execute in sequence until it reaches line three. Here, we technically call another subroutine, a system-defined one that generates a random integer from one to six and returns the result. This would cause another stack frame to be constructed. However, we'll keep this simple and only focus on our user-defined subroutines. Let's assume the subroutine called at line three has executed and returned the result four. We've now hit a return statement, but how does the program know where to go next? Well, we simply pop the stack frame off the top of the stack and it contains all the information we need. The line to return to, in this case, line 15, the values of the local variables, dice one and dice two, which need to be restored to their values of zero. We can now safely return to line 15. The value four, Returned from the function roller dice is assigned to the variable dice1. The program continues in sequence to line 16. It then calls the subroutine roller dice once again. So the program jumps and executes the code from here. But again, before calling the subroutine, it creates a new stack frame and pushes it onto the stack. So let's assume this time the subroutine called at line three has executed and it's returned the result six. We hit a return statement again. Just as before, we pop the stack frame off the top of the stack and it contains everything we need. The line to return to, in this case 16, and the values of the local variables dice one and two, which need to be restored to their values of four and zero respectively. We can now safely return to line 16. The value of six returned from the function roller dice is assigned to the variable dice two. As the value of dice one and dice two are not equal, the contents of the while loop are not run again. The program continues in sequence until it reaches line 19. It then calls the subroutine order dice. 
so the program jumps and executes the code from here. But once again, before calling the subroutine, the system constructs the stack frame, puts all the information in it, it needs, and pushes it onto the stack. The subroutine receives the values 4 and 6 and assigns them to the local variables d1 and d2 respectively. It proceeds in sequence to the if statement at line 6. The if statement is evaluated. As the value of dice 1, 4, is less than the value of dice 2, 6, the program jumps to the else part of the if statement at line 8. The program proceeds to line 9 and another return. This time we will be returning the result of the calculation d2 plus d1, so in this case 6 4, 6 concatenated to 4. Just as before, we pop the stack frame off the top of the stack and it contains the line to return to, in this case 19, and the values of the local variables dice 1 and dice 2, which will need to be restored to their values of 4 and 6 respectively. We can now safely return to line 19. The value of 64 returned from the function order dice is assigned to the variable roll. The program continues in sequence to line 20. We hit another return. Again, we simply pop the stack frame that's currently on the top of the stack. It contains the line to return to, in this case line 24. We can now safely return there. The value of 64 returned from the function output throw ends up in the print statement found here. The program prints the value 64 to the screen and ends. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How is a stack frame used with subroutine calls?